Even before the Civil War in the United States, there was a secret native black Indian tribe that created a safe haven for escaped slaves. Not only that, but they fought alongside the slaves for freedom and carried out the largest slave revolt in U.S. history. However, their story and struggle have been completely taken away from history books. No matter where you try to see, you won't find much information about this secret native black Indian tribe. It's because their history has been successfully erased. And today, black people don't know about this 300 year old black Indian tribe. So who was this tribe? And how did they fight and establish the largest promised land for escaped black slaves? Welcome to a new episode of Black Africa Diary, a channel where we talk about black African history, culture, arts, and civilization. It's a place where you will see the real picture of Black Africa, its stories, and the events defining it. In this episode, we will tell you the real story of a native Black Indian tribe they fear to tell you about. Let's get started. The story is of Black Seminoles, consisting of escaped African slaves and native Black Indian Americans who sought refuge and freedom amidst the rugged landscapes of Spanish Florida during the 17th and 18th centuries. While their story often receives less attention than events like Nat Turner's Rebellion or the Haitian Revolution, it remains one of the largest slave revolts in United States history, even before the Civil War. At its essence, the origin of this coalition traces back to a bold escape by a small group of eight men two women, and an infant from the harsh bonds of slavery in South Carolina and Georgia. Instead of risking recapture by fleeing northward, they chose to carve out a new path toward freedom in the largely unexplored territories of Spanish Florida. This decision marked the inception of a movement driven not solely by the desire to flee oppression, but by a determination to establish a haven of liberty against all odds. For 150 years, the Black Seminoles cultivated their own settlement, distinct from the oppressive system of slavery prevalent in the United States. Anchored in resilience, defiance, and unity, their community became a testament to the unyielding courage of the human spirit. Families torn apart by the horrors of slavery found solace and strength in the bonds of familial and communal solidarity, fostering a spirit of resilience that would shape their legacy for generations to come. Yes, the Black Seminoles would help escaped slaves at all costs, even if they had to fight the colonizers for that. The Black Seminoles and other Native American tribes formed an alliance born from a shared yearning for freedom, which blossomed through mutual respect, cooperation, and interdependence. Together, they confronted the trials of survival in the wilderness, transcending racial and ethnic barriers to forge a collective identity. As their settlement flourished, the Black Seminoles emerged as symbols of hope and resistance for those still ensnared by slavery. Their defiance against oppression provoked the anger of neighboring slaveholding states, sparking conflicts that would define their legacy. Despite enduring relentless pressure from slave catchers and military forces, they remained resolute in their pursuit of freedom, inspiring future generations with their commitment. Despite their immense contributions to the fight for liberty, the story of the Black Seminoles has often been marginalized in history. For centuries, their voices were silenced, their sacrifices overlooked, and their legacy forgotten. It is only now, with renewed interest and scholarly inquiry, that their story is being rediscovered and acknowledged for its profound impact on American society. But before we learn how Black Seminoles fought and brought a slave rebellion, we must first understand who they were. The Black Seminoles' roots go back to the early 18th century. During this time, Spanish Florida became a refuge for runaway African slaves escaping the brutal conditions of plantations in the British colonies of South Carolina and Georgia. The Spanish, aiming to weaken British colonial power, offered freedom and land to escape slaves who would convert to Catholicism and pledge loyalty to Spain. These runaway slaves, known as Maroons, sought refuge among the Native American tribes in Florida particularly the Seminoles. The Seminoles themselves were a blend of various Native American groups, mainly from the Creek Confederacy who had migrated to Florida. They welcomed the Maroons into their society, fostering a mutually beneficial relationship. The Maroons and Seminoles developed a mutual relationship. The Black Seminoles, as they came to be known, adopted many aspects of Seminole culture, including language, dress, and customs. In return, they contributed agricultural expertise and labor to Seminole communities. 
This alliance strengthened the Seminoles' resistance against external threats, including European colonists and other Native American tribes. The Black Seminoles established their own settlements, known as Maroon communities, often located near Seminole villages. These communities maintained a distinct identity, blending African cultural practices with those of the Seminoles. The Black Seminoles became known for their skills in agriculture, hunting, and warfare, playing a crucial role in the Seminole resistance against external pressures. The Black Seminoles emerged as a distinct group stemming from the Gullah people, descendants of enslaved Africans residing in the coastal regions of South Carolina and Georgia during the 18th century. Their quest for freedom led them to the untamed landscapes of the Florida Peninsula, characterized by sprawling tropical wilderness, dense jungles, and perilous swamps infested with malaria. During this era, Florida was under Spanish control, having abolished slavery nearly two centuries prior. Despite serving primarily as a buffer zone between British colonies and Spanish territories to the south, Spanish Florida provided refuge to escaped slaves, guided by Christian principles mandating sanctuary. The promise of freedom in Spanish Florida quickly spread among enslaved individuals, sparking hope and courage in the hearts of many trapped in the horrors of slavery. Over time, Hundreds embarked on hazardous journeys through treacherous terrains and hostile territories, driven by longing for liberty. Despite facing hunger, hazardous landscapes, and the constant threat of slave catchers, some managed to join the initial group, laying the foundation for what would become the inaugural Black Seminole community. In 1693, King Charles II of Spain issued a decree granting freedom to enslaved people in Florida and those who could reach its shores. This proclamation spurred a significant influx of enslaved people into Spanish Florida, leading to the establishment of frontier maroon communities. These communities thrived, blending the cultures of liberated Africans and Native Americans who shared a common struggle and a resolute commitment to safeguard their newfound freedom. United by shared adversities and a fervent desire for liberty, they formed a cohesive community that welcomed runaway slaves and stood united against the relentless pursuit of English slavers and settlers. As time passed, the Black Seminoles and Native settlers regarded themselves as a unified entity known as the Seminoles of Spanish Florida. Their resistance against slavery and oppression, coupled with the prosperity of their diverse community, posed a challenge to the fledgling United States government and its slave-owning elite. Upon assuming the presidency in 1828, Andrew Jackson made it his mission to eradicate any threats to the institution of slavery and suppress resistance through forceful means. Jackson, a former slave owner from Tennessee and staunch adversary of indigenous peoples, identified what he deemed an Indian problem and enacted the Indian Removal Act. This marked the beginning of a brutal campaign aimed at forcibly relocating Native American tribes from their ancestral lands. The Black Seminoles, along with their Native allies, fell under the crosshairs of this campaign, facing heightened pressure and aggression from the U.S. government and its military apparatus. The plight of the Black Seminoles and their indigenous counterparts worsened as Jackson's policies unleashed a torrent of violence and forced displacements. Despite their resilience to defend their land and freedom, they encountered formidable opposition from the well-equipped and numerically superior U.S. military forces. Nevertheless, the Seminoles persisted in their resistance, refusing to yield to oppression and injustice, which only intensified Jackson's resolve to expel them from their territories. In the face of escalating violence and mounting pressure, the Black Seminoles and their indigenous allies continued to fight for their survival and autonomy. Their struggle against the forces of colonization and slavery epitomizes the resilience and bravery of those who dared to confront injustice and oppression head on. As Andrew Jackson took on the role of military governor of Florida, he mobilized his forces to launch a campaign against the Black Seminoles, aiming to bring them under complete control. Thus began the First Seminole War, spanning from 1816 to 1819. During this period, the Black Seminoles faced brutal atrocities, yet they remained resolute, displaying unmatched courage and determination. Jackson's army commanders implemented ruthless tactics, orchestrating a scorched earth strategy that involved indiscriminate killing and destruction of property. Despite these harsh measures, the Seminoles remained undeterred. The Black Seminoles, numbering over 800 Negro warriors, united with the native Seminole Red Stick warriors, mounting a fierce resistance that caught their adversaries off guard. Led by revered leaders such as Chief John Horse, 
Driven by their longing for freedom, they fought fiercely despite being outnumbered. Eventually, Jackson's troops managed to raise the Seminoles' fort, systematically reducing it to ashes. However, the Seminoles continued their guerrilla warfare from the marshy terrain of Florida, refusing to relinquish their freedom or succumb to enslavement. By 1819, after sustaining significant losses, Spain found itself compelled to sell Florida to the United States for $5 million to avert further conflict. This transaction granted the United States expanded authority, paving the way for them to eradicate the Seminoles once and for all. Nevertheless, the resilient Seminoles remained steadfast, setting the stage for a protracted conflict that would span years. Thus began the Second Seminole War from 1835 to 1842, sparked by the Seminoles' defiance of relocation directives. This time, they were joined by hundreds of formerly enslaved Africans, numbering between 300 and 485 individuals who had escaped from their captors to join their cause. This conflict, dubbed the Negro War, challenged the conventional narrative of an Indian problem, underscoring the significant role played by African Americans in the fight for liberty. Before we continue further, tell us, are you enjoying the video? If yes, please like and share the video and subscribe to our channel to watch more videos on Black Africa. Let's continue now. For seven arduous years, the Seminoles waged a guerrilla resistance campaign against the formidable United States Army, earning the moniker of the Negro War for their relentless struggle. Despite facing overwhelming odds, under the leadership of figures like John Horse, they deftly outmaneuvered the U.S. military, leveraging the terrain and other factors to their advantage. Their ferocity in battle underscored their refusal to yield to oppression or relinquish their autonomy. The role of John Horse remained crucial during this. Born in 1812 into a unique blend of African and Seminole heritage, he had made freedom his noble cause. While details about his early life remain sparse, it is known that his father, Charlie Caballo, traced his lineage to a mix of Spanish and Native American ancestry. Raised alongside his sister by his mother in one of the black settlements, John likely grew up immersed in the traditions and practices of both African and Seminole cultures. The tranquility of John's upbringing was shattered by the outbreak of conflict between the United States and Great Britain. American General Andrew Jackson capitalized on the chaos of war to invade Seminole territory, disrupting the lives of John Horse's family and their Seminole allies. In the tumultuous aftermath, many of their black allies faced the grim prospect of recapture and re-enslavement on distant plantations. These turbulent times left an enduring imprint on John Horse, shaping his resilience and strength in adversity. John's formative years were spent in the Tampa area. Embraced by the Okan Indians, he honed essential survival skills, mastering hunting, fishing, tracking, and archery. Yet John's aspirations extended beyond traditional pursuits. He sought to expand his horizons through education, acquiring proficiency in reading, writing, and conversation in English, Spanish, and Hiti, the language of the Upper Creek Indians and the Seals. As John matured, his role within the Seal community evolved, propelled by his linguistic abilities and cultural acumen. Serving as a trusted interpreter for the revered war chief, John acted as a vital link between his people and the encroaching American forces. His interactions with U.S. Army Major George M. Brooke, recorded at Fort Brooke, marked his emergence onto the historical stage, underscoring his growing influence within Seminole society. The First Seminole War, spanning from 1816 to 1819, served as a crucible for John Horse and his compatriots. Andrew Jackson's aggressive expansionist policies plunged the region into turmoil, prompting Seminole communities to defend their land and autonomy fiercely. Amidst the chaos of battle, John likely witnessed firsthand the toll exacted on his people and their struggle for survival against daunting odds. Despite the challenges of the First Seminole War, John Horse emerged with a commitment to champion the rights and liberties of his people. His experiences during this tumultuous period molded his convictions, instilling in him a dedication to seminal autonomy and resistance against oppression. As tensions simmered and the specter of further conflict loomed, John would ascend as a beacon of leadership, guiding his community through the turbulent waters of change ahead. Then began the Third Seminole War, the concluding chapter in the series of Black Seminole Wars, which unfolded from 1855 to 1858. At this point, the Seminole population had sharply declined, 
with only a few hundred remaining nearby. Driven by a fervent desire for territorial expansion and bolstered by a burgeoning belief in westward expansion, the United States government sought to eradicate these last vestiges of Seminoles from Florida. The conflict erupted from simmering tensions over land and resources. Under the command of Colonel William S. Harney, the U.S. military launched aggressive campaigns to capture or eliminate the remaining Seminoles. These endeavors frequently entailed destroying crops and villages in a bid to starve the Seminoles into submission. Despite their diminished numbers, the Seminoles, alongside their black allies, mounted a fierce resistance. Their intimate familiarity with the terrain and adept survival skills enabled them to withstand military assaults for three arduous years. Florida's impenetrable swamps and dense forests served as natural fortifications, affording the Seminoles strategic advantages against the U.S. forces. The Third Seminole War witnessed a continuation of the guerrilla warfare tactics employed by the Seminoles in preceding conflicts. They utilized hit-and-run maneuvers, ambushing U.S. soldiers before swiftly retreating into the wilderness, frustrating the U.S. military's efforts to secure decisive victories. Despite the relentless onslaughts by the U.S. government, the Seminoles and their black allies remained resolute in their defiance. Their determination and resilience thwarted the U.S. military's endeavors to quell them, prolonging the conflict and exacting significant costs on both sides. The Third Seminole War marked the culmination of the U.S. government's concerted efforts to expel the Seminoles from Florida. While a handful of Seminoles managed to elude capture and remain in the region, the majority were compelled to capitulate and relocate to Indian Territory in present-day Oklahoma. The scars of conflict ran deep in the young United States, with the Seminole Wars exacting a heavy toll of over $50 million and more than 1,500 soldiers' lives. This clash between the Seminoles and the American military marked an unfortunate chapter in the nation's history. Despite being outnumbered and outgunned, the Seminoles, through their resistance, inflicted significant damage, setting ablaze numerous sugarcane plantations and bringing the United States to an impasse. Their defiance echoed across the land, challenging the imperialistic ambitions of the burgeoning American empire. One of the most tragic outcomes of this strife was the forced displacement of the Seminoles, a harrowing journey etched in infamy as the Trail of Tears. Like countless Native American tribes before them, the Seminoles were forcibly uprooted from their ancestral lands and thrust into unfamiliar territories. Yet, even in supposed refuges, betrayal lurked. In 1842, Nathan Clifford, the United States Attorney General, delivered a devastating blow to the Seminoles' aspirations for freedom by decreeing that the nation couldn't grant liberty to enslaved individuals. This decree nullified their emancipation papers, exposing them once again to the specter of capture by native slaveholders. Despite this setback, the Seminoles refused to yield. In 1849, they embarked on a perilous odyssey covering over 1,400 miles to Mexico in pursuit of sanctuary and liberation. Despite encountering formidable obstacles along the arduous journey, treacherous terrain and hostile adversaries, their resolve remained unshakable. Upon reaching Mexico, they found refuge in border towns like Noximiento, where the Mexican government extended a welcoming hand, resettling them in exchange for their service in safeguarding the nation against Apache raids and Anglo-American incursions. Even amid relentless oppression, the Seminoles persisted, laying down roots and bequeathing a legacy of fortitude and defiance to future generations. Theirs is a tale of indomitable spirit and unyielding resistance in the face of adversity. In the darkest hours, they clung to their dignity and their fervent pursuit of freedom. In 1870, John Horse received a call to arms from the American military to combat hostile Native American factions. Leading his contingent known as the Black Seminoles Indian Scouts, they fought valiantly alongside the esteemed Buffalo soldiers. Despite the ferocity of the conflicts they encountered, not a single member of the Black Seminoles Indian Scouts perished or suffered severe injury. John Horse aspired that America would reciprocate their service with land, sustenance, and compensation. However, upon the cessation of hostilities, they were summarily dismissed from the fort they had faithfully served a stark reminder of the enduring injustice and discrimination they confronted despite their sacrifices for the nation's cause. The narrative of slave revolts and the fight for freedom often spotlights well-known events such as the Haitian Revolution and the American Civil War. While these chapters are crucial in the battle against slavery and oppression, 
the efforts and impact of the Black Seminoles frequently receive less attention or are downplayed in mainstream historical records. This oversight reflects a broader trend of historical erasure and the continuation of white supremacist narratives in educational materials and discussions of history. Take, for example, the Haitian Revolution, a significant turning point in the struggle for freedom that led to Haiti's independence from French colonial rule in 1804. Under leaders like Toussaint Louverture, enslaved Africans in Haiti revolted against their oppressors, establishing the first independent Black Republic in the Western Hemisphere. Similarly, the American Civil War, spanning from 1861 to 1865, is often hailed as a pivotal moment in the fight for emancipation within the United States. Centered on issues like slavery, states' rights, and the nation's future, the conflict between Union and Confederate states resulted in milestones like the Emancipation Proclamation and the eventual abolition of slavery. Yet, amidst these significant events, the experiences and contributions of the Black Seminoles frequently receive insufficient attention and are relegated to the sidelines of historical narratives. The underrepresentation of Black Seminoles in history books and educational materials can be traced back to the widespread influence of white supremacist ideologies. Throughout history, narratives surrounding conquest, colonization, and slavery have been crafted by those in power, often at the expense of marginalized communities. White supremacist beliefs have shaped historical interpretations, leading to the marginalization or erasure of the experiences and contributions of Black Seminoles and other marginalized groups. Furthermore, the exclusion of Black Seminoles from historical discourse reflects a broader pattern of neglect and marginalization of African-American history in educational resources and public conversations. Despite the significant role played by Black Seminoles in challenging slavery and oppression, their stories are frequently misrepresented or overlooked in mainstream historical accounts. This perpetuates a cycle of ignorance and marginalization that obstructs efforts to address systemic racism and inequality. Did you know about this native Black Indian tribe earlier? What, in your opinion, might be the reason why white supremacists and history books try to hide about this tribe? In the comment section right below, share your thoughts on the real slave struggle story, which is deliberately hidden to prove that Black slaves did not resist slavery. Do you want to watch more videos like this one? If so, subscribe to our channel and press the bell icon next to it. We bring videos on Black Africa, its history, rich arts and culture, and things the world should know about. Thanks for watching, and until the next video, stay tuned.